I'd just like everyone uh, to know that um, over the weekend we've pursued um, a line of inquiry that we may now think is not um, connected to the uh, nurse, the attempted abduction of the nurse in Brisbane Street um, uh, as she walked to the PA hospital on Saturday night. Um, that a line of inquiry hasn't been totally eliminated but we just ask uh, members of the public that we are looking for a, uh, a male offender with black skin, could be African or Aboriginal uh, in descent. Um, he has a large deep scar on the left side of his face uh, and what happened at nine o'clock on Saturday night this person has confronted the nurse who parked a car in Brisbane Street uh, in the vicinity of the P Princess Alexandra Hospital. As she's walked to work he's confronted her um, struck her with a sharp implement in the side of her stomach which has left a mark on her body um, and then she's fled, um, got fr gotten free and uh, run to work so we still are looking for outstanding offenders. Um, the victim described the car as a silver Nissan Pulsar and it was parked in the vicinity of as I said Brisbane Street and Air Street at, uh, at near the PA hospital. It could be possible, yes, it could be. Uh, our victim speaks uh, good English. Uh, she is of Filipino descent, but uh, it could be possible that maybe the shock of the event that they may have said, give us your car or, or something like that, but we can't be certain of that. What's the line of inquiry that um, perhaps you're ruling out? Is it the fact that this offender is possibly from Toowoomba? Yeah, our detectives from Dutton Park spent yesterday in, in Toowoomba uh, there was a group of young Sudanese boys from Toowoomba. They were acting suspiciously at Brunoon Railway Station on Saturday night. And strangely enough, one of the offenders does uh, fit the description of the offender with the uh, nurse. And that vehicle uh, likewise fitted. So we've, we're currently running that out. But as I say, at this stage, we don't believe that is linked to the nurse. So what were those people doing um, at the train station? They were what, what made the uh, just, just that they were coming and going and acting a bit suspiciously around female passengers. Uh, it turns out that one was there to meet his girlfriend. So they were coming and going, turning lights on, off, and uh, good work by the security guard for Queensland Rail. He actually went up and spoken to them, got the rego number, and that's how this line of inquiries developed. So you're not pursuing them as offenders um, for a separate incident at all? They weren't doing anything? No, they were acting suspiciously or could be perceived to be suspicious and that's why the security guard took the uh, action he did. And we, as I said, our detectives have run that line of inquiry out there. Does this mean you're back to square one? Uh, at this point in time, we have ruled them out as a suspect for this offence on the nurse. So, yeah, in, in short, we are back to square one and we are act, asking for anyone in the member of the public to come forward to assist, either come forward to Dutton Park Criminal Investigation Branch or um, Crime Stoppers. What do you think, Any ideas? Uh, we've got no idea what the sharp implant was. Um, don't know whether it was a knife or, or whatever. Uh, I can say that the nurses... Um, uh, top was um, damaged, was pierced, and she does have a minor scratch to her um, stomach. So obviously you don't have a rego on the car either, because that car turned out to be the wrong car. At the, at the time, so. That's right, we don't have a rego. We do know, or she described it as a small silver Nissan, and had a similar lo logo to the Nissan, so whether it was a Pulsar or, or something like that. So is it still be considered an abduction attempt? Uh, we're still treating it as an attempted abduction, certainly. Ah, oh, they could well do, my word, yeah, they're quite brazen in uh, the way they fronted this, this girl and were very demanding and of her. Would you warn people out there to, to be vigilant? My word, certainly, yes. What were some of the, I guess, threats that were made? What, what was the conversation? Does she remember any of that? Yeah, she, she claims that uh, she was threatened, uh, don't scream, do what I say, uh, get into the car, was what she, uh, what she believed was said, so. Uh, not, not uh, of note, no, not of, not of great note. Uh, obviously shopping centres and that are vulnerable from time to time. Uh, of note, lately we have noticed a lot of uh, high-end motor vehicles being stolen, but they're from uh, breaking into houses, burglary offences. 
Yeah. I'm not sure, sorry, no. Are there any other leads um, in relation to, I guess, this specific car or with some other man after people have seen it on, say, you know, in the newspaper and on TV television and people come forward saying that they have seen it? Like, are there any sort of leads that you're following? Uh, there are. There are a number of leads we're uh, following in relation to a number of offences that have happened over the weekend. Uh, in relation to silver vehicles, we are following those lines of inquiries. Any of it yeah, there is one particularly strong involving Aboriginal offenders and as I said, uh, the detectives are running that out as we speak. That particular silver vehicle was dumped at Eight Mile Plains. A subsequent stolen vehicle has been used for a series of other offences, so um, we're very interested in following that line of inquiry as well. And you're following that up now? Yes. So it was dumped at Eight Mile Plains after it was used in another offences? That's right. Whether it's this vehicle or not, we don't know, but it is similar in uh, nature. So. Uh, no, not, not of note, no. How is the victim? Oh, she's very upset. The detective said she's uh, most distraught by the, what's happened. What would you say to people out there in terms of being vigilant and keeping an eye out for the offender and also being very careful? Well, I'd be very vi vigilant. Um, we've had uh, other instances on the weekend where they've just driven by, threatened people from the car window. Uh, particularly if you're carrying a handbag, um, mobile phone, wallet, the like, backpacks. Uh, anything like that, I'd be, I'd suggest people be very vigilant, particularly late at night. Is there anyone that you've spoken with in relation to the eight mile planes uh, fire or incident? No, as I said, the detectives are running that line of inquiry out at the moment, so there are suspects for that that are, we're seeking. No, but I, uh, I had just recently had a conversation, I'm liaising with Queensland Health. They have their own uh, investigative body, so I'm closely working with them. And uh, as I say to all nurses, um, this, this particular nurse had parked not, not in the uh, parking area at the hospital. There was some street away, so obviously they're probably at more risk. And uh, I suppose the good thing that's happened here, the, the actual nurse's car park wasn't targeted. Uh, look, look, all I can say is my daughter's a nurse at the PA hospital and they're most vigilant about starting work late at night and I think they're more aware, more aware than we appreciate of just what risk they are at, but I can't comment on that email. Has it frightened your daughter? Oh yeah, she's most concerned. They, they are all concerned, particularly starting late, late shift and that, and um, she mainly parks where the nurses do park on site at the hospital. Why was this nurse parked out on a particular street? Have you asked her? I haven't personally asked that. All I can imagine is that's probably where she parks uh, for cost effective or whatever. I don't know. It's a hundred spaces free in the car park straight across the road. Oh. Yes, that's, that's a good point. Any word on the, the extra patrols maybe around there in the coming days? Like yes, there will be. We've got a police in the beat at the hospital and together with Dutton Park there will be extra patrols for sure.